What is our greatest source of power? Is it water or gas? Is it wind or is it solar? We believe it is the potential inside all of us. Potential is everywhere. Do you see it? In the classroom. On the field. Commuting to work. In the office. Or just starting up. Sometimes it is hard to see. Sometimes it gets lost. And sometimes it gets wasted in the wrong job. We believe in the power of potential and the ability to unlock it. Providing managers with the key. Providing employees with the path. We believe in the power of potential. Let us help you realize yours. Ladies and gentlemen, please welcome founder and CEO, Adam Miller. So thank you all for being here. We have an amazing conference coming up, as Chris just talked about. What I want to talk about today is the power of potential. It's something that I'm very passionate about. And having been at the very first convergence, when there were only eight other people in the conference room with me, it's something that I personally believe in. The power of potential is very real. Before we talk about it, though, I want to put in context where we are in the world. We're in the midst of the fourth industrial revolution. We all know about the first three, right? There was steam power, and then there was mass production and assembly lines, which changed the way that we manufacture goods. Then the third one happened much more recently when we had computers and automation and we started to automate processes. But now we're in the fourth one. The fourth one they call cyber physical. I don't know who came up with that name. It doesn't really make any sense. It's, it's a very fancy name for iPhone. It's basically the convergence of the computer and physical items. But combine this time with artificial intelligence and the result are things like autonomous vehicles, like smartphones with GPS and all sorts of capabilities. That's the world we're in and the change that's happening with this industrial revolution is much faster than the change that's happened in any of the other ones, by orders of magnitude. This is something that you hear a lot of people talk about, right? People are talking about the pace of change and the challenge associated with that pace of change. Because this new Industry 4.0 is causing us to rethink and reimagine almost everything. The way we conduct business, the way jobs work, the way we live. It's something that everybody's talking about. It's in all the publications, whether you're talking about consumer publications or business publications, this is a very hot topic. This idea that change is happening so rapidly, are industries prepared for it? Are companies prepared for it? Are individuals prepared for it? Are you prepared for it? We've talked a lot before about the skills divide, but I want to admit something. 
This is not new. This is actually a picture of one of the first telegraph machines. This came out in the 1830s. It was very difficult to operate a telegraph machine. It was a big machine, lots of capabilities, very difficult to manage and work with. And so you needed a highly skilled employee to be a telegraph operator. And as you can imagine, it was hard to find them. So if your town got a telegraph machine, you were really excited until you realized that nobody was able to use it. And so you had to figure out, how do I get somebody able to use this telegraph machine? And as you can imagine, being a telegraph operator was a really good job because you had a very unique skill set that was very highly compensated. So this has been going on for a long time, right? Technology causing changes which create new jobs. Those jobs are requiring incremental skills that most people don't have. And so those people are sought after and highly compensated. So here's proof. This has been going on for a long time, almost 200 years. But this time, it feels a little bit different. Why is that? It's because the scale, the magnitude of what we're talking about. So if you just look at America, there are about six and a half million people that are still looking for work. So even though unemployment is extremely low, six and a half people are either unemployed or underemployed looking for work. But most of them can't fill the 7.6 million jobs that are available. Because intuitively you would say, well, there's more jobs than there are people looking for jobs. That should be great. We should have no unemployment at all. Nobody should be underemployed. But the reality is that people don't have the skills needed to do those jobs. So that's a pretty big scale, right? We're not talking about a few telegraph machines. We're talking about millions of jobs. In fact, if we take this a step further, employment is expected to increase by over 10 million jobs, meaning there's going to be 10 million more jobs created. Problem is 40% of those jobs are going to require advanced skills. So we're talking really big numbers now. It's growing three times faster the pace of people being able to create these skills. In fact, we always talk about, and you've heard about this problem, predominantly people talking about the technology industry, and in particular, computer scientists, engineers, people that are able to operate as technologists. Why is everybody talking about that when we're talking about 10 million jobs? The reason is this is even more severe. Of the half a million new tech jobs being created, there's those people are all fully employed, right? The unemployment level in that segment of the labor pool is basically zero. Anybody who wants to work and get a job. So if there's a half a million new jobs created, who's going to fill those jobs? Well, nobody knows because there's only 40,000 new people entering that labor pool. So that means every year there's going to be a major gap between the number of jobs being created for computer professionals and the number of new graduates that have those skills. So this is a very acute part of the problem, but it's not unique, right? This is a widespread problem that has a lot of scale. Last year, we spent a lot of time talking about the skills divide, and it is very real. And what I think people don't appreciate is how global it is. This skills divide is not just in the US. This skills divide is everywhere in the world. It's not just in California. It's not just in the major tech centers. It's everywhere, in every industry. And it's becoming more and more pervasive. And so disruption has to be expected. In fact, if you think about the Fortune 500 as kind of the linchpin of the economy, right? Many of you 
work at Fortune 500 companies, big part of our client base. The reality is even the Fortune 500 companies, which are extremely well capitalized and have tons of resources, and if they needed to, could pay for a lot more engineers, even they are going to be highly disruptive. They need to adapt or they need to be, or they're going to be left behind. And we believe the solution to this problem is really right in front of you. The answer is the, the people you have already. You're not going to find new people that can solve these problems. We think if you can tap into the power of potential amongst your own workforce, with your own people, you can do amazing things. The power of potential is smart for business, but what I want to focus on right now is that it's great for people.